This video is sponsored by JLC PCB. A while back, I constructed a starter motor powered bicycle, which, not so surprisingly, ended up in smoke. As you may already know, starter motors are designed with the assumption that they will only be used for short bursts of typically around 30 seconds or less. In an attempt to enhance my starter motor's duty cycle, I implemented several modifications. I incorporated variable speed control, eliminated the solenoid, made new end plates to accommodate bearings instead of bushings, and introduced cooling holes. Despite these efforts, none of these modifications were enough, and the motor overheated after about 10 minutes of continuous use. While brushless DC motors are the best option when it comes to applications such as electric bikes, the idea of taking this starter motor and modifying it for continuous use poses a fun challenge. Ever since my previous video about my starter motor bike, I've been thinking, what if I could convert this starter motor into a brushless DC motor? This is a 48 volt, 1500 watt brushless DC motor. And this is the 1.4 kilowatt starter motor that I had previously modified. The anatomy of these two motors is very different. The brushless DC motor has a laminated stator core and permanent magnets bonded to the rotor, while the starter motor contains pole shoes and has a wound armature. Because the starter motor does not have a stator, I cannot simply just rewind it and then build a new rotor containing permanent magnets. So then I thought, what if I made my own stator? Well, this is where things get tricky. Stator cores are made from very thin electrical steel laminations, typically only fractions of a millimeter in thickness. The reason for these laminations is to reduce eddy current losses. A motor stator made from a solid core would indeed create a strong magnetic field, but it would suffer from several significant drawbacks compared to one made from laminations. So why is a ferromagnetic core even necessary? Why not just 3D print one? Not only are stators used for structural purposes and to hold the windings, but the use of electrical steel helps to concentrate and guide the magnetic flux, enhancing the motor's efficiency and performance. Great Scott experimented with 3D printing brushless DC motor stators in one of his videos. He printed one stator using PLA filament and another stator using iron-infused PLA filament. These 3D printed stators worked, but they were very low torque and refused to turn with minimal loading. The low melting point of the PLA was also a problem. I contemplated numerous methods for creating my own stator. One idea that I had was making stator teeth out of recycled transformer cores through wire EDM cutting. However, this method poses various challenges, including the risk of lamination separating during the cutting process, and the difficulty of sourcing transformer cores with consistently thick laminations. Most importantly, I would need to find a service willing to work with me. Another idea could have been cutting and stacking the laminations myself, but I don't have a machine capable of cutting the laminations, nor do I know where to buy electrical steel for a reasonable price. So I ended up searching the internet, hoping to find a stator core with similar dimensions to what I required, but ended up being unsuccessful. During my search, I ended up on Alibaba and noticed many suppliers offering custom stamped motor laminations. The problem was, to create a custom stator core, these suppliers must manufacture a die for their stamping machines, which is why they often have a minimum order of hundreds or even thousands of pieces. Just as I came close to giving up on my search, I came across a company called JY Stator who offers a prototyping service. This service utilizes wire EDM cutting to create the stator prototype samples quickly and at a low cost. Before I move on, I should probably talk about my plans for this motor. The inside diameter of the starter motor is almost the same as the inside diameter of the brushless DC motor. Additionally, the rotor of the brushless DC motor is 65 millimeters in length, and the armature of the starter motor is also 65 millimeters in length. Because this is my first time building an electric motor, and I am no expert in motor design, I figured I would try to replicate the design of the brushless DC motor. The main idea of this video is to see whether or not it is possible to build a powerful electric motor at home for a reasonable cost. My plan is to keep the design for the stator fairly similar to the brushless DC motor stator. To make the rotor, my plan is to turn down the outside diameter of the armature on the lathe and then glue magnets around the outside. The brushless DC motor has 12 slots, 10 poles, and is wired in a Y configuration. It is wound with 24 gauge enameled copper wire and each phase consists of 33 wires in parallel. Each stator tooth has three turns. 
After sending my CAD file to JY Stater, they provided me with a quote of 150 US dollars and the option of epoxy powder coating for an additional $20. I know this may sound expensive, but for a custom manufactured stator core, this price is exceptionally fair. To get something like this manufactured here in North America, it would be insanely expensive. So I decided to make the purchase, and two weeks later, my package arrived. Wow. <laughs> Oh my goodness, it's perfect. Here's my 3D printed version. And there's the real version. I was very impressed with the finished product. The additional $20 for the epoxy powder coating was absolutely worth it. It will make the winding process much easier as I won't have to worry about the wire scraping against the sharp edges of the stator core, resulting in a short. The next step was the winding process. I purchased a spool of 24 gauge magnet wire with a temperature rating of 200 degrees Celsius. Because I needed each phase to consist of 33 strands, I first had to create a spool of wire for each phase. I determined the length required by winding a string through the stator to represent one phase. This also makes for good practice before starting the actual winding process. After making my spools of wire, I began winding the stator with the same pattern as the brushless DC motor. The uppercase letters represent clockwise windings, and the lowercase letters represent counterclockwise windings. To streamline the winding process, I 3D printed jigs of three different sizes that slide into the stator slots. These jigs secure the wire in place and compress them to leave space for subsequent turns. Once the winding was complete, I made wedges by cutting thin strips of micarta on my table saw. The wedges will help ensure that the windings stay in place. Next, I cut the windings to the appropriate length and began the tedious task of removing the enamel coating. I started by using a pair of needle nose pliers to scrape off most of the coating and then went over it with sandpaper glued to a clothespin. I eventually came up with a faster solution, which was using these wire cutters. There's a screw on the side which allowed me to set the maximum cutting diameter. Setting it to the perfect diameter allowed me to easily scrape off the enamel coating. Finally, I could solder on the leads. The next step was to add the Hall Effect sensors. This is also the perfect time for me to talk about this video's sponsor, JLC PCB. Thanks to their services, I was able to create a custom PCB for the Hall Effect sensors, which I must say, turned out very nice. Ordering PCBs at JLC PCB is extremely easy. Their online platform is very user-friendly, making it simple to upload files and order boards within minutes. They can manufacture PCBs in as short as 24 hours and offer priority shipping so that you can receive your package within 3-5 to five business days following production. I created my PCB an easy EDA and was able to check out directly from the software. Additionally, you should check out JLC 3DP as they specialize in top tier 3D printing and CNC machining services, which I will definitely be exploring for future projects. If you sign up using my link in the video description, you will receive $60 in different coupons. Once again, thank you to JLC PCB for sponsoring this video. Hall effect sensors are a type of magnetic sensor that detect the presence of a magnetic field. They're used in brushless DC motors to determine the orientation of the rotor relative to the stator. By sensing the rotor position, the controller can precisely time the commutation process, ensuring smooth and efficient motor operation. Most controllers expect Hall effect sensors to be placed either 60 or 120 electrical degrees apart. The Hall effect sensors in the brushless DC motor have 120 degrees spacing. If you'd like to learn more about Hall Effect sensor placement, I recommend watching my video on building an alternator-powered bike. I've also placed a link to a good article in the video description. Okay, now that the stator is complete, let's move on to making the rotor. As you can see, the outside diameter of the armature is much larger than the inside diameter of the stator, so it needs to be made smaller.
Because I had to remove so much material, I decided to make some rough cuts on the bandsaw to save time. Unfortunately, during this process, the laminations began to separate. I worked around this problem by making some shaft collars on the lathe. I then used my shot press to compress the laminations back together, and then tighten the set screws to keep them compressed. Looking back on the footage, I'm surprised to see how much these laminations had actually separated. Now that I no longer had to worry about the lamination separating, I turned down the rotor until it reached an outside diameter of 46 and a half millimeters. The rotor of the brushless DC motor consists of arc magnets. I was unsuccessful in finding arc magnets with similar dimensions. The closest magnets that I could find were these grade N42 block magnets that are one and a quarter inches long, a half inch wide, and one eighth of an inch thick. I'll be gluing the magnets to the rotor with JB Weld due to its high strength. Before gluing them, I used sandpaper to roughen the surface of the magnets. This will help ensure a stronger bond. To make sure that the magnets are glued in the correct location and evenly spaced, I designed and 3D printed some jigs. I decided to glue just five magnets at a time to make the process easier, and this also ensured that I wouldn't make any mistakes. JB Weld is magnetic as it contains powdered iron. This made the gluing process slightly messy as the epoxy wanted to spread across the entire surface of the magnets. The entire gluing process took a few days, but I was quite pleased with the result. To guarantee that the magnets would not detach from the surface, I used JB Weld putty to fill in the gaps between the magnets. Okay, so the final step was to remove the windings and pole shoes as well as the brushes from the starter motor, because we definitely won't be needing those. Because the motor casing is 7.5mm thick steel, I decided to use set screws to hold the stator in place. This worked perfectly and it also allows me to remove the stator if needed, and let me tell you, I've had to take this thing apart so many times. Alright, so let's see if it works. With brushless DC motors, there are 36 different wiring possibilities for the hall sensor and phase wires. I began testing each of the wiring combinations until I found one that worked. <laughs> there we go! Even though the motor was working on the bench, as soon as I mounted it to the bike and applied a load to the shaft, I realized that the motor had very little torque and failed to turn the wheel. So this is without the chain. Sounds super powerful. And then this is with the chain. So even when I lift the back wheel, it's having a hard time moving it. Super frustrating. So I'd assume that maybe I had made a mistake when winding the stator and decided to rewind it. Luckily, I had more than enough magnet wire left to do this. This time I tried a slightly different pattern, which I obtained using this winding layout calculator. This calculator is handy because you just need to input the number of slots and magnet poles, and it will provide you with a diagram. I know the diagram shows an outrunner motor and I have an inrunner motor, but the pattern's the same for both. After rewinding the stator, the result was the exact same, and this confirmed that the problem was with the rotor. So I decided to test the motor with the rotor from the brushless DC motor. All that I had to do was design and 3D print some spacers. This time the motor was extremely powerful and had no problem moving the bike. <laughs> I think the main problem is that I used block magnets rather than arc magnets, which resulted in a larger air gap. The air gap of a motor is the gap between the stator teeth and the rotor magnets. With my homemade rotor, the air gap ranges from 0.87mm to 1.6mm, and the rotor from the brushless DC motor has a constant air gap of 0.75mm. Additionally, I have no idea what grade the magnets on the brushless DC motor are, they could possibly be a stronger grade than the N42 block magnets. Rather than hunting down new magnets and waiting for them to arrive, I really want to test this out. Okay, here we go. Uh, I'm putting a lot of faith in these 3D printed bearing housings. Woo! 
This thing's awesome. Not only did the motor perform well, but the 3D printed spacers also held up without a problem. So in conclusion, building a custom brushless DC motor is a lot of work, and for most people, just buying one with your required specs is the obvious option. But for anyone who requires something custom, or just wants to enjoy the process of building their own motor, I think that the prototype service offered by JY Stater could be very beneficial. I personally just had a lot of fun converting this motor into a brushless DC motor, and I learned a lot throughout the process. If you made it to the end of this video, I just want to say thank you, and I also wanted to mention that I just launched a Patreon. If you're a fan of my content and you wish to help support future projects, this is one huge way that you can help, and I would be extremely grateful for it. If you don't want to become a patron, which is completely fine, one huge way that you can support the channel is to either like this video or consider subscribing. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time.